Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash bookshow. Then go over to morbidlybeautiful.com as we are now part of the Morbidly Beautiful Podcasting Network. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special bulletin. Right, you hear those sirens again. It's time for another disaster. I'm Josh, and I'm joined here with Donnie. Yo. And the Professor Smoke. What's up? Will, once again, is on assignment. He couldn't make it. But he's he's going to end up missing half the summer disaster here if he keeps it up. <laughs> Hopefully he'll show up next week, and we'll talk about what we're going to be doing next week toward the end of the show, so you don't want to miss out on that. But needless to say, we talked about it on the preview episode a couple weeks ago. we got lots of cool stuff lined up here for the Spook Show Summer Disaster. I think this is another uh, pretty good one. Uh, we're going to be talking about Don't Look Up from 2021. Now, this one, usually in this in this slot, if you're, if you're anticipating how we normally do our programming, this would be a cannon fodder episode. But we decided a while back to kind of put cannon fodder on hiatus during the summer, in particular during this Spook Show Summer Disaster series, because uh, we didn't really want to force the issue. We didn't see any movies that necessarily fit the criteria that we were trying to aim for here with the Summer Disaster that were canon films. So instead of stretching something thin, like we did last summer during camp spook show for hot chili, and then ended up with one of the worst movies we've seen in, in years. Uh, instead of doing that again, we just decided like, we're, let's put cannon fodder on the shelf until September. Uh, it comes back on labor day. So uh, if you're looking for that, you know, just, you have to wait until labor day. But uh, so we decided just to kind of throw in a, another random wheel spin off of the list that we had put together of disaster movies, basically the only criteria being it, it, we didn't want it to be another horror movie. So that's how we ended up with Don't Look Up from 2021, which I think is going to be an interesting one. I'd say this is, a, you know, if you take things too seriously, politically and everything, this is one of those that could be polarizing. But if you just step back and see it as political satire, you know, just having a good time with politics in general, you know, w- with some of the subtext of what's going on in this movie, I think you can have a good time with it. And, and we'll get deeper into that discussion. But I guess, have, have either of you guys seen this one going in? Uh, not me. No, I was, uh, I, yeah, this was a first time watch for me. Smoke? Uh, first time watch for me. I think I consciously avoided it for a long time. <laughs> consciously or subconsciously, one or the other. Uh, no, I mean, I, <laughs> no, it was a conscious decision. <laughs> uh I hadn't seen it either, but it's not because I was avoiding it. It's just, you know, it was one that like, yeah, I need to get around to that. And just kept, you know, you know how it is with Netflix stuff in general. It's, mm-hmm. it, for me, it always seems like it happens with Netflix more than anything. Like I'll be like, oh, that's, that's not going anywhere. I'll get to it. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, you know, what, you know, next thing you know, it's five years later and you never watched it. You know, that always, for some reason with me, it's Netflix shit. I don't know why. Cause I don't do that with a lot of other ones. Like, you know, if I'm Shutter or Hulu or. Yeah. Something like if it's something I really want to watch, I'll go right to it. But for Netflix, for some reason, it's like, ah, I'll get to it. I don't know. But yeah, this was, yeah, another, this I mean, was another that's one pretty much the same for me. I don't know why it is. Like maybe it's just because, you know, Netflix is more consistent as far as like they generally don't take their shit down. You know, like it's just eh, it's going to be there. I'll watch it at some point. I'm sure there are some things that Netflix has go, goes away. At yeah, times. yeah, I know it yeah. does. It's just by and large, it doesn't, you know, so it's like, eh, I'll get to it. And then before you know it. But yeah, anyway. That little tangent out of the way. I want to remind you to go visit aaspookshow.com. That's the center of the Spook Show universe. From there, you can check out our YouTube channel where we've got Video Vortex, Grindhouse Gutter, uh, one of our newest series, Traumatic Experience, where we go through the Trauma Films Library. Uh, lots of cool stuff going on there, so you can reach that through aaspookshow.com. You can also get to our our podcast archives and, of course, our Patreon, patreon.com slash aaspookshow, where every month you have exclusive podcasts such as uh, Crafts to Peace Theater, We've got uh, video minisodes every month, including the Library of the Professor. So lots of cool stuff over there you want to check out. We highly encourage you to go subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Show. So yeah, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the trailer for Don't Look Up. This is not real. This is not real. This is not real. This isn't happening. 
Kate, uh, tell me this isn't really happening. I hear there's uh, something you don't like the looks of. We discovered a very large comet. Oh, good for you. It's headed directly towards Earth. This comet is what we call a planet killer. At this exact moment, I say we sit tight and assess. Sit tight and assess? Sit tight and then assess. The sit tight part comes first, and you got to digest it. That's the assessment period. This is the worst news in the history of humanity. He just blew us off. What are we going to do? We have to release the information. So we just leak it. Our guests today have made a pretty big discovery in space. How big is this thing going? I can't destroy my ex-wife's house. Is that possible? <laughs> there is a 100% chance that we're all going to die. Hey. I'm, I'm, Hey. Hey. <laughs> well, the handsome astronomer can come back anytime, but the yelling lady, mm, not so much. Not so much. We're going to get the news out there one way or another. It's real and it's coming. FBI! Jesus Christ, you could have just called me. This comet contains $30 trillion worth of material. What do trillions of dollars matter if we're all going to die? Oh, no, this is we're rich. That would be terrible. <laughs> You guys discovered a comet? I have a tattoo of a shooting star on my back. Oh, that, that's that's terrific. <laughs> this could be a complete disaster. This is already a disaster. <laughs> you know that girl from live TV said we're all gonna die? No. You're gonna You'll never take me alive! did have the FBI put that bag over your head. They don't do that. The CIA does, but I made them do it. You know, I had a feeling. It's a good feeling, because that is what I did, and it was very funny and cool. All right, now the one thing you'll, you'll definitely hear there, or if you don't know, I th- I'd say the first thing that sticks out of your mind when you, when you see this, the don't look up, or at least the trailer for it, is the cast. It's got, a, it's got an incredible cast, you know, no question about that, right? Yeah, it uh, um, includes five Oscar winners. Obviously, uh, Leonardo uh, DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Kate Blanchett, Meryl Streep, uh, Mark Rollins, and then two all two uh, Oscar nominees, uh, Timothy Chalamet and Jonah Hill. And even this movie, just this movie, was nominated for four Oscars uh, in 2022. It was nominated for Best Picture. Nominated for Best Achievement in Film Editing. Hmm. Nominated for Best Music Written for Motion Pictures and Original Score. And uh, Best Original Screenplay. Now, I didn't win any of those, but still. This is a uh, somewhat rare error for us here on the Spook Show, right? <laughs> to uh, talk about a movie that was actually nominated for Best Picture. We don't do that often, do we, Smoke? I mean, uh, what, what was did Jaws win an Oscar? I can't remember. I'd have to think it at least won one for something. Nominated. It was nominated if it For didn't sure. win any, but I, I, yeah, there I, hasn't been. We've done some, but it's very rare, very rare. Many, yes. We usually, usually our fare is more geared towards what do you call it? Uh, B movie, grindhouse crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not always. Slightly, but certainly not Oscar contenders. Contenders, no. yeah, very rare. Um, you asked about Jaws. Jaws won three Oscars. There you go. Um, so it was uh, a nominee for best picture. And, and it I, won. And I, and I know. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, it was a nominee for Best Picture. It won Best Sound. It won Best Editing. And uh, it won Best Score. And I know that's not the only one we've done that has. I'm, I'm not going nah, through the whole list and figure it out. Yes. I know there's been others, but my point is is it's very rare. Very rare yeah. for us. Yeah. But, yeah, but this is the first time watch for me. And, I, and uh, uh, we'll get into our ratings later. But I was kind of uh, pleasantly surprised. Like, you know, it was – It's a well, say what you will about, you know, what they're – going for here but i think it's a well done flick and of course when you get the likes of dicaprio and meryl streep and stuff involved you know it's gonna the execution of it at least is gonna be pretty good so yeah we'll we'll dig a little bit deeper into it here in just a second but uh as far as some of the background uh information is concerned this was released uh december 5th that's where it had its new york city debut its premiere 
December 5th of 2021. And then I think it wasn't, re- it was released on Netflix. I believe it, well, it had a limited release in theaters here in the U S and I think that was to get it. I think it has to have at least a limited release for like Oscar consideration. Mm-hmm. So it did get a limited release on December 10th of 2021. And then I think it came out on Netflix on December 24th. So Christmas Eve, 2021 rated R of course, total runtime of two hours, 18 minutes on IMDb. It's listed as a comedy slash drama slash sci-fi. The production companies were hyper. Sorry. I kind of weird spelling when you look at it from afar, hyper object industries and bluegrass films. And it was distributed by Netflix uh, for a budget of $75 million. So I guess, you know, once you watch this movie, you, you know, mm. no surprise there. But it only went on to gross $791,000 in the box office. Now, of, of course, you'd be like, Jesus Christ, that's like the biggest flop in movie history. But it wasn't because it was on Netflix. You know, they got a whole different scale when you're talking about a movie that was basically made just for that. So even that 791000 was just out of, out of that limited release to get it nominated. Because uh, this movie was on Netflix. That's where everybody's going to watch it. But I think I did see, at least at, one, at the time, it became like the fastest, or I should say the fastest to be the most watched movie on Netflix as of that time, like when it came out. I think in like basically about a week, it was the most watched thing, watched movie, I guess as you, you could say, in Netflix history. So I guess that's where the, the value of this movie came in, right? Would be drawing subscribers over to Netflix, right? Mm. I, I found one description. Is it's a, an apocalyptic political satire black comedy. <laughs> I think I think all that, yeah. kind of, you know. You, That's a good description. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause definitely, Actually, I think it's such a good description, you can skip the plot summaries. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we can't. We, we have to get into those here in a little bit. Hopefully, there's a really long one for you, because we need every nuance of this described. In written detail, like we like we already mentioned, you know, uh, the cast. But as far as the director, it was uh, directed by and written by Adam McKay. Now, he's a, a, a partner, mostly a comedy guy. Right. But I think he's a partner of Will Ferrell. So a lot of Will Ferrell stuff has always involved uh, Adam McKay. And it was also written by David Sirota. Uh, of course, it stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Meryl Streep, uh, Kate Blanchett, Rob Morgan, Jonah Hill, Mike, Mark Rylance, Tyler Perry. Timothy Chalamet, Ron Perlman, <laughs> one of the ugliest dudes in Hollywood. <laughs> uh, Ariana Grande even has a, a, a bit part in it. Uh, e- even some of the smaller parts, like Michael Chiklis, Paul Gilfoyle, uh, you know, are big time character actors. Melanie Linsky, you know, stuff like that. So, all in all, just a, a, a great cast here. Time for refreshment. Refreshment. For your enjoyment, there's hot, fresh popcorn. Tempting, delicious hot dogs. And so many kinds of ice cream. And of course, sparkling, delicious, ice-cold Coca-Cola for everybody at the refreshment counter now. For you, the listeners of the All-American Spook Show podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out the service. So I hopped on to audible.com, like I normally do, just to type something in. And I didn't think we'd see much if I just typed in, don't look up. So I just typed in, end of the world. And I'm sure we'll do this a couple of times this summer, but I just want to see what will pop up. And sure enough, we've got over 700 results for end of the world. So I'll just go, uh, I'll just name off a few right off the top. Cause I'm sure we'll dig into this well again. The end of the world is just the beginning mapping the collapse of globalization by Peter Zellin. That one is uh, almost 17 hours long. So that's a long listen for you, Donnie. You want to hear that one? Mm-hmm. The house at the end of the world by Dean Koontz. That one is uh, almost 10 and a half hours long. And then one more, this is the way the world ends. An oral history of the zombie war <laughs> by Keith Taylor. That one is almost 10 and a half hours itself. So yeah, like I said, there's over 700 results. So if any of that sounds like it floats your boat, and let's face it, if you're listening to this, you're into uh, end of uh, end of the world scenarios and whatnot. That probably uh, checks some of your boxes. So to download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash spook show. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash spook show for your free audio book. So I'm going to hop back over to IMDb and click on old Donnie's favorite plot summaries and see what pops up. It's a fairly new one. So there might not be up. Oh, never mind. There's a long one. <laughs> All right, let's go with it. Fuck it. All right. Let me do the one sentence synopsis first. 
two low-level astronomers must go on a giant media tour to warn humankind of an approaching comet that will destroy planet Earth. Now we've got the longer one. <laughs> this one was put on here by Netflix, so I guess this is going to uh, uh, sum it up as best we can, right? Uh, Kate DiBiaschi, an astronomy grad student, and her professor, Dr. Randall Mindy, make an astounding discovery of a comet orbiting within the solar system. The problem? It's on a direct collision course with Earth. The other problem? No one really seems to care. Turns out warning mankind about a planet killer the size of Mount Everest is an inconvenient fact to navigate. With the help of Dr. Oglethorpe, Kate and Randall embark on a media tour that takes them from the office of an indifferent President Orlean and her sycophantic son and chief of staff Jason to the airwaves of the Daily Rip, an upbeat morning show hosted by Bree and Jack. With only six months until the comet makes impact, managing the 24-hour news cycle and gaining the attention of the social media-obsessed public before it's too late pro proves shockingly comical. What will it take to get the world to just look up? So, uh, Donnie, where do you want to start, man? What, what do you think's the the biggest uh, place to start here with this one? <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> it's probably got to start with the comet discovery and the uh, the where, where they talk about the the Planetary Defense Coordination Office. Yeah, it's like, is that a real place? <laughs> and, yeah, like they, she literally like just kind of accidentally trips on this, you know, finding a comet out there and that it's 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 coming to earth to to fuck us up so they go to the president and they have this meeting in the white house to uh to warn them of it and then they just kind of like, yeah yeah we'll uh we'll, uh, we'll get right on we'll get it right and then like <laughs> i love the uh, and there's a running joke with that that happens right there too that like they're waiting to go see the president and they they leave him sitting out there for like what 8 hours or something like yeah, that something and they never like see that, him or whatever yeah. but one of the uh the guys that's like a general that come, that, <laughs> that is with him. He, he's like supposed to be like the the Pentagon representative or whatever. He goes and gets them like wa bottles of water and some snacks or something, and then charges them all ten dollars a piece for the, the <laughs> snacks. And then she comes to find out that the snacks were free. <laughs> so then throughout the entire movie, she's trying to figure out like why this fucking dude. <laughs> she's like he's 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 you know he's part of the damn president's staff. Why is he charging us for this? It doesn't make any sense. That's the greatest unanswered mystery of the movie, right, Smoke? <laughs> also, probably one thing we should get out of the way first is, like, if, if this were a real scenario, what would you want? Let, let's just say you didn't have the, the, the opinion, the option of knowing. Would you want to know that you were going to end up dying in six months, or would you not want to know until it's right there? You know? Well, that's a good question. Cause I don't, hey, yeah, I don't that's know another the, question entirely. I, don't know the Jeez. To that. <laughs> I think I would want to know. I mean, watching this movie, I thought about that. I mean, what? What would I want to know? Would I want to? I mean, you're going to eventually know. I mean, regardless of the whole political allegory of don't look up, whether some people are going to look up and not yeah, look up yeah, and yeah. believe it or not, believe it, whatever. <laughs> Leave that aside and just just say you look up in the sky and you see this. Nobody has reported it, you know, because yeah. to say that wasn't stuff. And you see it at some point, you know, when you see that everybody else is going to be seeing it. What's you know, well, where it's headed this way, whatever the hell that is. What's going on, you know? By that, by that point, they saw it. I don't know how many months it became visible before it was going to impact. I guess. I want to say it was six months, right? Like, that's the time frame. It that was, this, it this was six months and 14 days. Okay, that, was, yeah. that was the time frame. So roughly seven months, you know, the yeah. whole movie, basically. The whole movie. But whenever people, when you could uh, actually look up and see it, I don't know what that time oh, yeah, frame yeah. was. That was at least, like a, I say, a month or so out, Something I think, give or take. So at that point, you know, you got a month, maybe. Then when you see it, you look up and you see this, you know, what the hell is that? It's heading this way, obviously. Yeah. You know, you have a month. Maybe you would have a month of knowing that you're possibly going to die. <laughs> that, that's a that's a tough one. That's a tough question to answer because you would think on the surface that, yeah, of course I want to know. I want to get my affairs in order. But then there's yeah. that other side of you like, you know what? I just want to live my life yeah. and not worry about that because it would. I, I don't care who you are. It would be like. You wouldn't be able to go about your business. It'd be hanging over you, literally. Or, you know, like, you wouldn't go back to work because what would be the point? Oh, <laughs> no, no, I would not work anymore. I'd be like, you mean we're, yeah. we're definitely going to die in a month? Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, I'm, that's it. I'm done. I'm yeah. just gonna live not off the chance. land. I'm gonna live off the land for a month and then call it call it a day. You know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the whole world would collapse before the meteor even hit because oh, yeah. Yeah. nobody would be going back to work. The only thing you would be thinking of is your imminent death in a month or so. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah, it would be a interesting. 
Now, I know this is all like political satire and everything, and they're making fun of the current culture of uh, not just the politi- political, I keep fucking, fucking up that word, not politicizing everything. Forget that aspect of it. But that obs- that uh, social media obsessed culture part of it. I find it, I know, once again, it's they're playing it up for comedy's sake. I find it hard to believe that it would happen quite like that. You know, like, <laughs> if this were really going to happen, would we all just fucking ignore it for the latest Hollywood <laughs> yes. couple? I don't know, man. Like, I think... I, I, think, think, I think that was a bit heavy-handed, probably playing up the, the yeah, humor. Yeah, it, to, is, you know, it is. Aspect of it. But in reality, no, I don't... I mean, if you know, if you know that this is going to happen, yeah. then you're not going to... I think you would drop all of that stuff that we think is important <laughs> or think, really important. I think you would. I think you would. I think you'd drop it all and shit yourself. I think is what would happen. Yeah. yeah. I think everybody would get back to basics really quick as far as if you knew that you only had, even if you knew it was six months, even if you knew it from the beginning that it was six months, that's still nothing. You know, I mean, yeah. One yeah. month or six months of whether you saw it in the sky or not. I mean, I think everybody's going to be getting back to basics and there's not going to be. You would forget all the petty squabbles and all this stuff or whatever. And, you know, you would latch on to what's important, what you have in your life, or try to get back what you had in your life. What you know, connect, what, connect, you were connect with. <laughs> what you know, to kind of skip to the end of the movie, which is pretty much exactly what happens with that core group of people that were trying to warn everybody, right? That's exactly <laughs> yeah. what happens. At the end, they're just like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just, you know, they go grocery shopping calmly and then they. They go, they yeah. go back. They go back home, and then they start, they prepare a meal and just sit down and have a talk. You know, as as they know yeah. that this fucking comet is hurtling toward the Earth, and they're about to die any minute. Fuck it, let's you know, it's gonna happen. What can we do? Let's enjoy the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio gets back to his, you know, because he's got that whole running thing in there where he's having an affair with the news anchor. Yeah. Uh, and well, more than just an affair, I think they were actually talking about being together as a, you know, leaving oh, yeah, his yeah, wife like, or her or whatever yeah. it is. And then realizes that, you know, that this isn't real. I mean, she's just a, a, a typical sort of uh, anchor who's only only concerned with her you know, profession or whatever. Yeah, yeah. With what he's just using him for whatever she needs to use him for and all that stuff. And then realizing what's really important to him, what he, you know, his family with his sons and all that. And then getting back to that. As all the other people, like the uh, what's her name too, the the scientist that was discovered the asteroid. Yeah, Dibiaski. Yeah, yeah. The- <laughs> which they named the comet after her. That was funny. Yeah, I, I do think it was kind of funny. Like they kept ragging on her the whole movie. You know, like, and, and they they kind of brought down the uh, uh, the somewhat the value of Jennifer Lawrence being in a movie. You know, like one of the most beautiful actresses in Hollywood. Let's just uh, dumb her down a little bit and make her the butt of the jokes. Give her this horrible haircut. You know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> that, that was all on purpose. It had to be. Yeah. Well, I think they were making, I mean, well, me personally, I think they were making her kind of out to be, her look to be sort of like the modern, the, this might ruffle feathers, I don't know, the modern typical leftist type person where, you know, she's got the nose ring and she's got the yeah. that haircut and she's <laughs> got the mentality of sort of, like she breaks down real easily and, you know. Yeah. yeah. Shoes and the, <laughs> I think they were kind of making her out to be like that, you know, and then when she's on these shows, she has that, middle breakdown when she's on the show and then they and, all uh, just make fun of her for it like they start creating yeah. memes and <laughs> stickers. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. definitely all gonna die and then they just make fun of her about it and stuff <laughs> well and you know like you mentioned her haircut she kind of reminded me of it was uh um one of the it was the three villains along with uh uh nuclear man and, oh, and uh <laughs> In uh, Superman Four: The Quest for Peace, you know, this was supposed to be cannon fodder, so it is appropriate that you bring that up, I guess. Hey, you know, got <laughs> to. Now, are you thinking of Superman Three or Four? Superman Three, I... where they had the supercomputer with Richard Pryor and all that shit, is that the one you're thinking of? <laughs> no, I'm yeah. thinking about no the because uh, there were there were three like um, other villains that accompanied Nuclear Man. Am I? Am I? No, no, no. You're you're confusing Superman Two. Zod and all that. Am Zod, I? Yeah, I think you're kind of mixing everything Is it, up there. Yeah. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. all right. Well, either, either way, way yeah, Superman. Yeah. I can see the yeah. haircut. I know what you're saying. I think that's yeah. the chicken Superman three that you're talking about. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a unique. It's a unique haircut. I'm telling. you. I saw something too where like apparently like 
Jennifer Lawrence had chipped a tooth. Yeah. And yeah. The, and then they just decided like, well, just uh, we'll just fix it in post. And then she didn't get it yeah. fixed until afterwards. <laughs> what the fuck? But it had to do with the fact of COVID going on at the time, I guess, and she couldn't go to the like they weren't. She couldn't go to a dentist to get it fixed oh. for you know, for the movie. So they had to fix it digitally, fix that, you know, put her tooth back. I yeah, guess. yeah, that's weird. That seems like a. Uh, I guess you know, I, I, COVID was a weird time. I guess you know if that's <laughs> what it was. But like, I was thinking like, man, that just seems like an expensive thing to have to go through and digitally fix that. You know, alter her, alter that for the whole movie, just instead of just going to the dentist and getting it knocked out. But yeah. And they're they're Hollywood elites. They could have just paid a dentist to do it. <laughs> yeah, you would think like, all right, just. COVID protocol, just bring a guy in here, fix it, you know, well, fuck. COVID. Yeah. Whatever. Jennifer Lawrence pays during COVID to get her, you know, <laughs> nobody else can even go to the dentist. <laughs> I will say, I think Adam McKay, you know, uh, who wrote this and directed it. I think they did a good job here. Uh, also, I'll point out that they, they never said Republican or Democrat for any of this. If you notice, yeah, they never yeah, they said, never did. you know, you can infer your own things, right? They left it up to the viewer to decide who we're talking about here. And I think somebody even asked him or something like that. Like, well, was the president supposed to be Republican or Democrat or, you know, whatever. And he's like, uh, well, both sides have screwed up so much over the last 40 years. Does it really matter? You know, <laughs> just, uh, fill in the blank yourself kind of thing, you know? So, there were some odd things, like on her desk was a picture of her with Bill Clinton. Yeah, you just catch yeah. that one? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like, there were other things too that would throw you off. I think there was like, what well, they the picture of Nancy Reagan and stuff like that. So like, you see a little bit of both, and they never say what one side is over the other. Mm. You just they're all against each other, right? They all got their own points of view, but you don't know who's in charge here and which one they're making fun of. How about the Daily Rip? That's clearly that show. That's clearly just like what. I think at least like that MSNBC show, Morning Joe or something, right? That's kind of what they're, in a way, I guess it's all those cable news shows, right? Like yeah. that one and the shit on Fox News and the shit on CNN and all that stuff that we deal with here in America. You know, <laughs> the cable news, 24-hour news cycle, that's clearly just, let's just. Uh, oh, yeah, there was a, C thing was that, CNN, right? a CNN reference, but what was that? CBN or C CVN? <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, they had, and there's a number of them too, right? Like the Michael Chiklis thing where he's like on the Patriot. Yeah. Whatever the fuck that <laughs> was or that, something yeah. else. Oh, that was hilarious toward the end too. Like literally like the comet's about to hit. It's hurtling toward Earth. And it shows him and he's like, well, let's talk about the news that's on everyone's tongues today. Uh, some nonsense. It, it, nothing to do with the comet that's about to crack the Earth in half. It was something else. Yep. Like, topless nurses. Yeah. yeah. Topless, or something, not nurses. <laughs> Yeah, that's what, care. yeah, that's what everybody's talking. Meanwhile, they show like clips of the streets burning, you know, like everything's being looted and people are killing and, you know, riots and yeah. Let's talk about that. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's hilarious though, you know, like if you can stop and laugh about this shit, no matter what side you're on, I think there's a lot of laughs to be had. Um, if you don't like dipping your toes into the political pool, you know, you probably don't want to watch it because if you're easily offensed one way or the other for or against whatever the fuck it is you're for or against, uh, you probably should avoid it. But I, I think there's a lot of fun here further along in the movie when the government finally decides to help. And then they, then they launch rockets and then event and then immediately turn them around. <laughs> what it, oh yeah. Because, of, yeah, because there was a, who is it that comes in and it has a talk with the president and all of a sudden they're watching and like, wait a minute, I think yeah, he's turning around. And it was because they found out they could exploit it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they were trying to mine the, uh, uh, mine the comet for precious metals. Yeah, uh, yeah. They come to make, to them, all, make them all rich. They come to some conclusion that the the comets are full of all these materials that they need. So, but I like that they come to this conclusion when the they've just launched all the rockets <laughs> and then they turn them around. Like, is that even possible? Just to <laughs> launch these things like well abort and then just turn them all around. And <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think the rockets would be able to. Now the shuttle, maybe I don't know somehow. Maybe, but maybe, I don't, I don't know. know about rockets are unmanned, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think they all were except for the one. Remember they had the, uh, yeah, they, they had, had one, Ron Pearl one. Yeah. They had one guy in there. Like they, cause they're like Washington needs a hero or whatever the fuck. So they had to put one dude in there and then, uh, he's talking shit as the, as the, <laughs> as the rockets are going into space and then they have to turn it around. Um, that was some good stuff though. But then you get into the, a little bit later on in the movie, when you get into the don't look up versus just look up crowd, it's literally like, I guess half the people are like 
look, it's right there. There's a fucking comet. And then the other half is just like, nope, nope, nope. Don't look, <laughs> don't look up. Don't look at it. You know, there's nothing up there. They just, you know, <laughs> that was pretty funny. That, 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 that comet could have fallen out of the sky and busted the whole planet up before that pop artist started singing whatever that song was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was uh, well, Ariana Grande, but whatever her name was in the movie. Yeah. Oh all, yeah. All that was like, I could see all that happening. Like that's definitely like, Maybe not to that degree, but like, you know, turning the comedy up to 11, like they did in this movie, you know, the, the, uh, silliness of it all, you could definitely see like, well, this, uh, we need to have a fundraiser. And then there's somebody singing some song directly for the comet and all that shit. You know what I mean? Like I could definitely see something like that maybe for some fundraiser bullshit. But, uh, of course they launch these, they basically, they launch these things, they turn them around and then they're like, well, we can mine these things for gold or whatever. So then they decide to eventually, when it's pretty close to the point where this thing is about to hit Earth, they launch these uh, drones. It's the the company. Now that that guy that discovers this, his name is in the movie. It's it's Mark Rylance's character, Peter Isherwell. I guess it's kind of like uh, what would you compare him to? Smoke like Elon Musk or? Uh, I think uh, he's a combination. I think it's Musk. I think it's uh, Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of uh, like that guy. Like, he, here's the smartest guy in the room, head of this yeah. massive corporation kind of character. He's the one that encourages them to do this. So they send these drones up to land on the comet, I guess, to kind of test it and mine it. And then I guess their point is to crack it up because they can't... They, I guess they come to the conclusion they can't just deflect it in one. They can, like, let's let's crack it up into like 20 or 30 pieces. So like that won't necessarily destroy the earth and we can mine it. Right. That's the point. So they send these, uh, these things up and of course they fail. <laughs> so they're fucked. <laughs> and then the plant this is my guy, there was a scene in there where he kind of, <laughs> I don't know. It was a weird erroneous scene where you like spit somebody's hair. So I thought, are they trying to put Biden in there with them as well? Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of everything going on there. You know, like let's, who knows what the fuck they're aiming for? Like who they're making. I think they're making fun of everybody is the point, right? They're not aiming yeah. just at Republicans or just at Democrats or just the type of person. Yeah. They're like, let's just, let's just make fun of everybody. Yeah. Um, there's enough to go around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then the planet is obliterated. I mean, like now I don't think it's decimated to the point where like it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. I, it's, I just, it's just, um, it I mean, it's, it's a, like, yeah, it's a hell of a crater. And then it, you know, just kind of yeah, wraps kinda, around like, the whole, like a nuclear blast, basically the yeah, world, worldwide. Yeah. It pretty much takes out. But as far as like the look of this, it, let's get back to the spook show, summer disaster aspect of this. This part right here was top notch. Like as far as like the obliteration, you know, this is the kind of shit you come for the spook show, summer disaster for, right? <laughs> the mm -hmm. disaster part of this is pretty fucking epic. And yeah, it's like, kind of like you said, like they depict it as if it were sort of a, like if it had been a nuclear bomb that would affect the entire world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Certain level. Yeah. But which begs the question though, like if they had instead of putting all this money into the rockets and doing all this stuff, if they had put money into getting people into underground bunkers and things, you know, a good portion of the population probably would have survived. Yeah. Because it was just saying. surface level, it seemed like, you know. You know, at one time I thought there was gonna be this thing where like, you know, DiCaprio's character and Lawrence the, the, the when they were kind of back together and and eventually you find out they're going back home to just say you know, like we said earlier, they're just going to have a meal and ride it out, right? <clears throat> just let it happen. Yeah. I thought at first maybe, like, well, maybe they're smart enough to, like, all right, where's this thing going to hit? Okay, it's hitting in, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, the middle of the U.S. Okay, let's go to the opposite side of the earth and maybe we survive, you know? <laughs> but they didn't do that. They didn't go that far, but, you know? No, and I think, I think the reason why, well, of course, that wouldn't have been beneficial to the movie, I guess, because really, I think, I think, you know, and I maybe even the director said this, that the comet sort of represents, the climate change crisis. Yeah. Well, there's obviously it's, some of that going on too. Yeah. So they found a different way out. <laughs> yeah. That would deflate the whole, you know, true. True. Like, so. I guess the, the point is there's no way, a, really no way to get away from this except for like in this movie, there's a group of the powerful, right? The, the richest people in the world, so to speak, the, the president on down, they all hop in a ship and get the fuck out, you know, just go off into space because apparently they think they have found a planet that is earth like somewhere out there. I think they come up with some horseshit universe or uh, solar system somewhere out there. Yeah. It's supposed to be like Earth. So the planet is obliterated. 
uh, that they, they call it the bass ship or whatever. It gets away. So they're, they're, they're clear. And then this is where you get your first of two kind of cut scenes. Once the credits begin, <laughs> the first one is 22, I think it was 22,700 years later or something like that. The ship finally <laughs> gets to where it's going in the, in Vimsnarf system somewhere. And <laughs> they land on earth and, uh, they all get off the ship and they're naked. Cause you know, they're coming out of the, t- the, the space pods or whatever the fuck. And uh, now remember earlier in the movie, there was this thing where like Isherwell's company has come up with this uh, algorithm, I guess, for lack of a better term, that can determine how you're going to die. It'll say like, all right, Donnie, you're going to die by plane crash or whatever fucking smoke. You know, mm-hmm. you're going to uh, die of cancer or some shit. Well, in this one, they the president says something like, well, how am I going to die? And he's like, our system say you're going to die by uh, something called a Bronto rock. <laughs> I think is what he said. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know what that is. Well, now that this is where that pays off. 22,000 years later, they land on this random planet and they're off. And I guess it's earth like. And then she's like, Oh, this will work out. And then this, this monster comes along and just fucking bites her right on the face and like takes her down and kills her and eats her. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck was they're basically? What the fuck was that? I guess that was a Bronto rock. So <laughs> <laughs> she went over to head or something like, Oh, look at that. It was like a, like a, Alien bird looking creature yeah, like with some ostrich looking. What is that? <laughs> Beautiful. Bat. Bites her face off. Yeah. I guess that was a Bronto Rock. So that was the that was the whole payoff of the Bronto Rock thing. And then the last thing that you see after the credits at the end credits is her son is played by Jonah Hill, who's a douchebag the entire movie. He's like King Douchebag. Uh of course, he comes out of like I guess whatever bunker they were in when they were doing the final launch and it failed or whatever. He comes out and he has survived. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> possibly the only dude that has survived on planet Earth, of course, is the biggest, uh, the biggest piece of shit in uh, Jason Orlean. I think was the name of the movie. So yeah, so yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's Don't Look Up from twenty twenty one. So uh, Donnie, we'll let you start. What are your thoughts and uh, what's your star rating for this one? It's kind, of, it's kind of long for me. Oh, uh, typically, my my wheelhouse is about. You know, right around 90 minutes, maybe, you know, just under two hours, two hours I can handle. You know, I thought <laughs> it's a really well done movie. I think uh, kind of the the Ariana Grande, that whole mu- basically a music fucking video in the middle of the movie. <laughs> I think they could have cut that out entirely. Uh, that kind of it's like they, it's almost like they wanted to just justify her being there. Like, well, we've paid her a lot of money. Uh. What, you mean you'll write a song for this kind of? Okay, fuck it. Let's put you in. <laughs> yeah. It's still a good movie, though. Like, I, I still enjoy it. Is uh, I mean, typically my my rating is uh, if it's for me to watch it again, it's got to be at least three stars. I would watch this again. Um, I don't think it's right up there with uh, my favorite so far. But um, so I'm, I'm going to give it a three and a quarter. Smoke, what do you say? As we talked about it, <laughs> it's, it's full of political satire. And it kind of, I mean, it. I guess, you know, it kind of makes fun of both sides and not just political satire, but makes fun of social media, billionaire elitists, <laughs> all this type of stuff. But I mean, it's a bit, for me, it's a bit too heavy handed all around and long for that. Uh, we talked, we actually, we mentioned this at the end of the last episode we did of disaster movies, where I think you mentioned like George Romero and these people will put some, you know, some subtext in their movies that are political to a certain degree, but it's there if you want to latch on to it. Or you can just leave it and, and you can enjoy the movie for what it is. This movie, though, is designed as a satire. It's designed to be, I guess, you know, over the top in that aspect yeah, of it. But kind of blatant. Like so, from so many sectors, like, I'm hitting you with all this, all those. Some parts are funny and work. Other parts are just kind of like, yeah, I'm looking at the, how much longer is this movie? <laughs> the, the, effect, the, the acting is great, as you would expect. The... Special effects are excellent in the uh, disaster at the end of the movie, and then the way everything kind of works towards that. I, I, li- I like the coming together of the core group in the movie. You know, when they they realize it's that's you know that we can't do anything about it, so let's just sort of have a fellowship together and ride out the end of this. You know, and they kind of come together for that, regardless of any of them's social or political leanings or whatever. You know. But other than that, the rest of the people mm-hmm. in this movie are all just scumbags, yeah. <laughs> and I guess they're designed to be that way. So yeah, like I said, it it does kind of drag on in point at parts. It, some parts are funny, some parts are well done as far as the special effects. But overall, it's it's probably not one that I'll revisit again. So, 
And like Donnie said too, it's kind of like that, that also is sort of a criteria about if I'm not going to watch it again, I'm probably not going to rate it above three. So uh, I guess I'll give it maybe two and a quarter. I'll agree and disagree with some of what both of you have said. I, I think it is long, but I think considering the fact that it's this long, it moves pretty well. It's two hours and 18 minutes, but it doesn't necessarily, to me, feel like. I, I've watched movies that are far shorter that feel way longer than this, for sure. I think it moves at a pretty good pace for a two hour and 18 minute movie. That being said, yeah, it's, you could probably cut 30 or 40 minutes out of this and you still get the same movie. And I'll also agree that it is heavy handed. It's not like Romero where it's hidden subtext kind of thing. It's just, it's smacking you right in the face like a dead fish, you know, it's pap, 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 uh, whether you like it or not, but maybe that's the point, right? Yeah, that is probably what they're going Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're definitely obviously aiming for that. So I think it's well done. Acting is great. Um, it, but to, to, to what y'all have said, as far as that line of three stars being like, would I watch it again kind of thing? I, I, I'm going to say I probably wouldn't watch this again, but it's not because I didn't like it or anything like that. It's just like, to me, it feels like one of those movies that once you've seen it, you've seen it kind of thing. Like, yeah. I'd you know, still watch it. Yeah, I'd know, still I'm watch not it saying again. I wouldn't never watch it again. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. like, I think it's not one that I would, re- you know, maybe well, five or 10 years from now or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, it's not like a regular viewing kind of thing because I'm going to remember it. You know, it's not something I would watch mm-hmm. frequently. So, uh, that being said, you're not going to be in years. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. Ooh. Well, you know, <laughs> that's, that's kind of the theme of the spook show summer disaster. Maybe we make it to the summer, end of the summer. Maybe we don't. Who knows? But yeah, I, I think I'm going to land on a solid three. I mean, I think there's, there's some good funny parts here. The disaster, you know, the, the, the planet ending at the end, that, that was some, uh, Really cool shit as far as just disaster movies are concerned. L- lots there. You know, yeah, it's heavy handed, so I'll knock it down a tad for that just because, all right, we get it. But, you know, overall, I think, you know, you can have a good time with it. And uh, there we go. I give it three. So overall, we give it 2.8 stars. That's without Will's two cents. At some point, we'll get his uh, rating and adjust if necessary. Uh, as far as your usual aggregates on IMDb, it gets a 7.2 out of 10 stars. So that's a little higher than usual there. Uh, the meta score though, it's a, it, it's, it's a little lower than, I, you know, than you would think on the surface 49 that's out of a hundred. So pretty much right at the middle there for it over on, uh, rotten tomatoes, pretty much about the same on the tomato meter. And this is out of a lot of reviews, 56%. So I was mm. kind of surprised, you know, that the critics uh, would, uh, not like it as much as that, but, the audience score was a lot higher. It's seventy eight percent over on there. So I guess the the audience has liked it as far as on Rotten Tomatoes and on IMDb, but the critics didn't necessarily like it as much as you would think. So that's kind of surprising for a movie with this cast and then got nominated for four Oscars. I was kind of surprised by those numbers, but I think it also kind of jobs what we said two point eight out of five stars from us. So that's pretty much where we'll leave it as far as that stuff's concerned. But uh, before we completely check out. Connections. Now, basically, that we're doing the connection from the crypt because uh, this would have been cannon fodder, but you know that that fits yeah. just as well. You know, either way. Yeah, still yet. So uh, we've basically get, we've got a couple of uh, connections here. So uh, to past Spook Show episodes, Patty Tippo, she plays uh, the French president. She was in Ten to Midnight, uh, which is. Um, you know, canon movie, obviously, but uh, it was a long time ago we uh, we covered that. Uh, she was just like a party girl in that one. It was, it was actually her first role. And then Celeste Olivia uh, just plays a bit bit part here, uh, but she was she was one of the uh, I, I I believe it was one of the managers in the in that that movie. Uh, I think it was Smoke's favorite, uh, Black Friday, um, from. <laughs> Uh, from you know, 2021 when it, when it, when as we well. always start with it was blank's favorite <laughs> that means it's it's what is about to come after that is horseshit <laughs> yeah uh so yeah that's the cast side and then um the crew we've got um and this this is uh this kind of confusing to me a little bit because uh makeup effects chris lyons he is uh, he specializes in special effects teeth but I didn't like. Maybe I'm just kind of well, lost on like what was the. Well, maybe it what was, was the uh, effect there. Maybe it was Kate Blanchett. Like her fronts, oh. like she looks off there. Like 
Oh, well, you she know what? Like it could have been. She got like fake fronts or something, dude, like going on. Like it makes her look different. Like she looks like almost really? like a different lady. You know, it really. could have oh. also been uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Well, yeah. If she was missing that too. The chip two thing. Maybe. I think a three, a third one too is, uh, I can't remember his name, but the, da- the Inkwell, not Inkwell, but it's whatever. Right. The well. yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. He mm. had those. What looked like, you know, really white faults kind of teeth, Mark, and I think that's what the game yeah, that speech. Yeah, Mark Rylance definitely. Oh, okay, looked, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, I got you. Mark Rylance well, definitely uh, looked different here than he he normally does. Yeah, that was uh, makeup effects. Uh, Chris Lyons, he uh, was also in past Spook Show episodes of uh, Twenty Eight Days Later, which we'll talk about, you know, later on, yeah. and Shaun of the Dead. We don't have the gore score, the highlight kill, and, and the kill count, and all that because this wasn't a, a horror movie, so. Uh, we'll skip one kind of, more kind of thing I do like want to mention. So we were talking about, uh, you know, this being a long movie. So I, I did a just kind of a quick rundown. The last 20 years of, uh, you know, Leo DiCaprio movies. Mm-hmm. Um, he's only done one movie in the last 20 years that was under two hours. I can believe it. Yeah. Revolutionary it. Road <laughs> yeah. from 2008. I can believe it because all of his movies pretty much over the last, you know, since basically what Titanic, I guess, give or take. Yeah. I have been like long, epic, two hour plus movies. Yeah. Man. A long. Yeah. A lot. He said for the fact that I think all movies these days are longer than they used to, certainly longer than they used to be. Like it's almost oh, yeah. Yeah. uncommon to get a movie under two hours anymore, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time period back in what the forties and forties, I guess, smoke, forties, fifties, where movies like Gone with the Wind, Ten Commandments, stuff like that. They, the big epics. Right. They yeah, been, epics. That, yeah, yeah, they would be kind of... really long, but yeah, for the most part, yeah. Then, then there was a time period where everything was an hour and a half, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like I, in the main era of the eighties and nineties, yeah, yeah. oh, the seventies too, I guess. And there I were bet, I bet hour you... and a half time that they wanted the pacing to be, you know, that's a good time, I guess. They figured for like people to be in the theater for, and, and, that's and ironic. not get. It. I think it's Rest ironic that you point all that out, Donnie, because I think a lot of these, maybe not all the movies that we're doing here on the Spook Show, Summer Disaster, but a lot of disaster movies tend to be on the long side. They do. Like, if you look at a lot of the run times of, like, Armageddon and Twister and, you know, movies like that and some yeah. of the ones that were, yeah, they tend to be on the long side. So there, there is that common thread for some reason. But maybe that's because they have to do, like, the setup, the character development, and then get to the destruction kind of thing. I don't know. But, yeah, so, so. It, we're going to continue the, 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 the Spook Show Summer Disaster next week with The Book of Eli. This is Donnie's Choice from uh, 2010. Uh, do you have anything, any precursor? For that one, no, you? no. I mean, I just picked it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on the list. No, I mean, it. you know, it was it? Uh, you know, this is a different uh, type of apocalyptic movie. I think. You know, yeah, you know it is. Uh, you know, Kenny is a big, big Denzel fan, uh, and um, this is actually be the first Denzel movie we've yeah, done. Yeah, no doubt. So, yeah. I mean, who doesn't like Denzel? No, I, I think everybody you know? does. I think it. I think how can he not? Yeah, yeah. You know, he's a he's a beautiful man. <laughs> That's Ooh, not why I said that. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, we're talking about... <laughs> well, we're going to go ahead and sign off here. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll read you the synopsis for the Book of Eli. We've got a, post- a post-apocalyptic tale in which a lone man fights his way across America in order to protect a sacred book that holds the secrets to saving humankind. So if I remember correctly back to this one, it was kind of like... It, was diff- it wasn't exactly what I anticipated from it. The mm. trailers that kind of sold it as one thing than it really was. So uh, I haven't seen it since back then. So I'm looking forward to uh, checking it out again. Smug, have you seen that one? I saw it when it came out in the theater, yeah, okay. so uh, but I haven't seen it since. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking forward to yeah, giving be- that one a, a second a second go because it's been a while. So see if it was that 2010? Uh, yeah, it came yeah, out in 2010. 20 so it's been mm-hmm. uh, 13 years since it came out. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking that one out again. So. Uh, like we've uh, talked about on the preview episode and we've talked about up to this point, we've got lots of cool stuff coming up this summer. This is just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. But you know, during a disaster, you have to watch out for the iceberg. So you never know what we may or may not hit around here. But And, and we also want to remind you that we've got that the disaster has carried over the ripples, the tidal wave, the monsoon has carried over to our YouTube channel as well over on video vortex and grindhouse gutter. Those will be affected all summer long. And of course, over on patreon.com slash AA Spook Show, Crapster Peace Theater will be affected over there as well. So you want to you wanna go check out over on patreon.com slash AA Spook Show. At the very end of the month on June 30th, we'll have the latest Crapster Peace Theater um, waiting for you there. So I guess that's it. So for Will, who couldn't be with us, Donnie, the Professor Smoke, 
I'm Josh. We are from the All-American Spook Show, and we will talk to you next week as the disaster continues. So goodbye, everybody, and remember, please, for the next day or so, the terrible lesson you learned tonight.